Welcome to the Minding My Own Business webinar series. Today we're going to talk about accounting, accountants, and your business. The Minding My Own Business webinar series is brought to you by the Fremont Group. My name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the executive director and founder of the Fremont Group. And I'll be your presenter here for the next 20 minutes or so. The Minding My Own Business webinar series is based upon the book that I wrote, Minding My Own Business, the proceeds of which go to support the Supremont Group. Uh, and it follows the six responsibilities of the small business owner. Each two months, we cover one of the responsibilities. The first two months, we cover the first responsibility, which is to make a minimum mandatory percentage of profit. The second two months, we cover the second responsibility, which is to create cost controls to assure that that minimum mandatory percentage of profit is produced. And the third two months, which is where we are right now, uh, is to create an organizational structure uh, to enforce the cost controls, holding people accountable for it and creating incentives within it, uh, so that that minimum mandatory percentage of profit is produced. All of our webinars are posted onto our Patreon site, which is available some to the public, uh, most to all to eventually to uh, patrons. And uh, then at our highest level, our clients are actually involved in the uh, bi-monthly interactive uh, major webinars. Uh, this is one of the supporting webinars uh, of this particular series. The Fremont Group is a nonprofit organization. Uh, our core business services are to provide small business management consulting, mentoring, and coaching to uh, small business owners. Uh, we also uh, provide uh, accounting services to small businesses. Uh, we have a website, our Patreon site, and uh, our uh, blog uh, on the Patreon site, which is accessed through our website. Let's start off with what is the role of accountants in general? Uh, the role of accountants in your small business is to give you tax advice, period. Actually, ethically, if an accountant gives you operational advice, they cannot then uh, audit or uh, the uh, results of those of that advice. And so there, and frankly, how many really good small businesses do you know that are actually run by an accountant? Accountants are very important uh, because taxes are very important. Uh, however, that is, that's what you should be looking for in, a, uh, uh, in an accountant. Uh, your CPA should be giving you tax advice. You should be trying to make all the money you can make and then they should be trying to figure out how to classify it so that you pay the minimum amount of tax as legally possible. That role often gets uh, confused when uh, uh, by small business owners that think they're also supposed to be uh, providing you with operational advice or uh, your daily bookkeeping. Uh, to get your daily bookkeeping done through your accountant is, is a very expensive and frankly not the most effective way to do it. So let's look at the role of accountants uh, with an analogy here. Let's look at tax accounting versus managerial accounting. And I'll start by telling a, a brief story, okay? Uh, a, you look out the window of your business one day and you see a small boy walking out there near the uh, street and may be on your property, may not be on your property, somewhere right in there. You're not really sure. But then a car turning in that may be turning into your business or near you or whatever, uh, turns and hits the boy. And you have this terrible tragedy that you have just observed. Now you have to write different letters to different people to describe what you have just seen in this terrible tragedy. What have you just seen? How are you going to describe it? And one letter you are going to write to your lawyer. Another letter you're going to write to your best friend. And another letter you're going to write to your nine-year-old niece. Now, needless to say, those letters will not be the same. And the fact of the matter is, if your nine-year-old niece got the letter that was intended for your lawyer, uh, she would probably very, be very upset and confused and really wouldn't understand it. And that's how we separate also the role of your bookkeeping and your accounting. You have tax accounting. 
most businesses are very good at tax accounting because you have to be. You don't have any choice, okay? Um, and your account, and this is where your CPA or your accountant comes in. And they classify everything and put everything into uh, uh, these different classifications and so on, uh, with the whole purpose being to minimize your tax obligations. And they can give you advice about uh, when to buy things or do this or that uh, based upon your taxes. But anyone who tries to run their business from their tax return is in trouble. I'll sit down with an owner and ask him to pull out his tax returns and then say, well, why are we doing this? And they'll look at it and say, well, we're, we're not. That's how they classify it for taxes. So we need managerial accounting. Managerial accounting is the letter that's written to your best friend. It's the information that you really want to know uh, that, is, that is there that you need to have to run your business. And that's the significant difference. There is accounting that you need to run your business by, and then there's accounting that you need to file your taxes. There is a third group, which is why I use three letters, uh, and that is if you're involved in bonding or if you're a buyer or just going to sell your business uh, or if uh, you know, uh, bonding buyers or, or brokers, I guess, is the three Bs. Um, and uh, there, obviously, you're trying to make your business look as good as possible. And so those are different types of things. You wouldn't go into your, or bankers, I'm sorry, bankers, buyers, and founders. Uh, uh, well, anyway, the, uh, uh, you wouldn't go into the bank to try and get a loan and put in front of them a package of materials that says, oh, we're really terrible. We don't make any money. That would like to be trying to make a sales call with a brochure that says we're a lousy company. We don't follow through. We don't make very good products and so on and so forth. But we want you to buy our products and pay full price. Yeah, right. Okay. That's a lousy brochure. Maybe you need a different brochure. Okay. Same thing when you go into a bank for a loan. Bankers, buyers, and bonders, those are the three. At any rate, uh, when you go into the bank for a loan, uh, you don't want, you, what you need to take in is a package that makes your self look as good as possible. Oh, we do this, and here's our managerial accounting, and here's our cash flow, and here's the different things that we have. And oh, by the way, look what a really good job our CPA does of minimizing our taxes with this tax return. So there are different purposes in these these different reportings. Sometimes uh, we get lost in that, and uh, businesses know their tax returns aren't what they should be running the business from, but then they don't have anything. You should never run your business based upon tax accounting. Let's start with the obvious. Profit. Is profit good or is profit bad? Uh, duh. Well, your tax accountants kind of think profit is bad uh, because that makes you pay taxes. And I've actually had business owners that were upset with profit because it's making them pay too much taxes. It's ridiculous, okay? Your profit is a good thing. You must run your business to make profit. You, your pro, and then from that profit, you have a profit plan, which we discussed back in the uh, cost control sections, uh, about the four things that you do with your profit, which are you pay your taxes, you buy new asset, you retain cash, and you pay yourself. That's this is where it comes from. Okay, um, so uh, profit is a good thing, not a bad thing, and uh, there are that's that's how you need to run your business. Okay. Secondly, almost every business I go into, and I ask them, "What are your most important assets?" Eh, they might rattle off this or that, but after certainly within number one or number three, they're going to say, oh, our people are our most important assets. They produce this. They're able to do that. We have all of this institutional knowledge on how the business runs and so on and so forth. Okay. Well, where does your tax accountant, your CBA, CPA list your people? They list them under wages and expenses. And then they tell you to keep your expenses as low as possible. This can almost create a hostile relationship between your employees and, and yourself and your objectives. The fact of the matter is you want to pay them the maximum amount if, they're, if they are actually producing 
more than they are you're being paid for if you have things properly structured. And it's so important to have uh, that institutional knowledge of your employees, lack of turnover within your climbers, which we discussed earlier, uh, all of that sort of thing. And so uh, if we were really going to start over again and have appropriate accounting based on managerial things, just like your accountant can put goodwill on your balance sheet, we would put your people and that institutional knowledge as an asset on your balance sheet, not just list them as an expense to try to be minimized. Obviously, we don't want to pay any more than we have to. We have to have productivity, but that level of productivity could be reflected in an asset if you thought, if you really wanted to take the time to figure that out. All accounting also needs to be timely, accurate, usable, and produced at a minimum cost. Dealing with tax accounting, you can be months behind in your information flow because they have to have everything down to the penny. It has to be exactly correct. Yeah, okay, you're right, because the IRS is going to demand it and you don't want to get audited and all that sort of stuff. And you have to fit into the schedule of your CPA as to when they have the time to go through your books and do those sorts of things. Well, I'm sorry, that creates a situation where you can be driving down the highway with a, um, a blanket over your windshield, having no idea where you're going, and then just hit the gas and sell some more and go faster without really even knowing where you're going. You have to lift up that blanket through your managerial accounting and know where you're going. The idea of uh, selling uh, more if your cost of goods exceed your uh, uh, your revenues is absurd, I and mean, there are that's the extreme example, of course. But uh, uh, you need to have certain information, and it needs to produce timely. What does timely mean? It means when you need it, when you can actually take uh, um, action on it and make a difference. If you're waiting uh, two weeks into the next month to get your last month's tax returns, you're just looking backwards. It's historical. That's all your tax accounting does. It's historical records of what has happened. You need to have forward-looking information as to what's going to happen, and that's where managerial accounting comes in. It has to be accurate, but accuracy is different for tax accounting and managerial accounting. Accuracy for tax accounting is it's got to be perfect. Accuracy for managerial accounting is got to be close enough to make sure you got the right uh, uh, information, basically the right information, so you can make decisions now and change what's going to happen. It has to be usable. What does that mean? I could hand most business owners or tax returns, and the vast majority of the stuff in it simply isn't usable. And Frankly, uh, even in other reporting, it comes out of QuickBooks and other different places, if you don't even understand the report, I mean, some business owners are excellent business owners, but they are numerically illiterate. You can't just give them a printout of a bunch of numbers that won't help them run their business. Maybe it has to be done differently. I don't care. A chart, a graph, uh, uh, crayons, who cares? As long as it is usable because it's, if it's not in a usable format for the owner, it's worthless. And it has to be produced at a minimum cost. You don't want to spend $10 to create reports that save you one. Goes without saying, but and it seems kind of silly, but that is an issue in many different places. So what is managerial accounting? A lot of it surrounds KPIs, your key profit indicators. And to identify those, ask yourself, what do I need to know and when do I need to know it so that you can properly manage your business? An analogy again that I like to use, and so unless you're in Omaha, this applies, is imagine your business is in Omaha and you can never go to Omaha. What would you need to know and when would you need to know it to properly run this business that you could never go to? You can't sit there and be hands-on with it. What do you need to know? Well, I might need to know my hourly sales, daily sales, whatever. I may need to know uh, uh, the cost of goods number. I may need to know certain overhead numbers. I may need to know some inventory numbers, uh, whatever other things that happen to be in your industry. 
those are your key and, and your cash, your cash position, how many, you know, ARs, APs. Those are the important things that you have to have some on a daily basis, some on a weekly basis, some on a monthly basis that you have to have to be able to properly control your business and it, particularly a business that you can't go into. Why do you need to set up and have effective managerial accounting like this? Well, if you ever really want to grow, you have to have this type of information. If you're only running your business from your gut feel, you can only get so big because unlike some of us, your gut is only so big. Uh, and it's also, and I don't think this is a word, but I use it all the time, it's not delegatable. You can't delegate your gut feel to a next generation uh, uh, son, daughter, uh, family member, owner, or a buyer, or anything else. It makes your business much more valuable, and it allows you to open up other, other uh, locations and so on and so forth if you can manage it. I have people uh, running a uh, uh, one or two million dollar business that work 50, 60 hours a week, trying to dig out all this information and run it hands on. Uh, and then I ask them, well, how do you think somebody, instead of a one or two million, it's, it's a, a, a hundred or a, a 200 million dollar business does it? Do they, instead of working uh, 50 hours a week, they work 500 hours a week? No, they get better information. They know what they need to know and when they need to know it and they're getting it. That's what's critical in managerial accounting. And so most of this information and your KPIs will come through some form of reports. Reports are, and I think we actually covered these in, in entirely in, in a communications uh, webinar um, last week or the week before, but um, the reports convey that information that you need to know when you need to know it. But there are also other ways that you can benefit from reports. Who benefits from it and how do they benefit from it? Oftentimes, forcing someone in a key position to provide a weekly or a report to you, daily report, whatever it is, of course it means they have to have the information to be able to do it and we covered all that, but simply the act of compiling the report can be as important as the information in the report itself. It creates that focus in that person as to whether or not they are doing the job and their job. And so if a, a KPI, for example, and I'll pull something out to the air here, uh, has an operations manager that requires you to hit uh, uh, cost of goods sold at not more than 50%, the constant focus that could be created in your operations manual um, position, operations manager position, uh, by requiring them every week to turn in on just a little sheet of paper. Okay, this week uh, uh, cost of goods were 52%. Uh, we're supposed to be at 50, and so we were two over, and here's why. Just the focus that that creates may be even more important. And here's what we're going to do to change it next week, by the way. Uh, and but that just that focus might be more important than whether or not the information is actually correct. Okay, maybe it was 51, it wasn't 52. So what? If they know they went over, that's what's important, and it creates that focus that's from it. Now you have pushed the responsibility for that KPI down into the organization instead of within yourself. How do you do that? What do you need to have? Well. Oftentimes you need help doing that. It isn't the easiest thing to structure. When I say you need help, is it from your internal accounting? Oh boy, here you can go. You see so many businesses where their internal bookkeeping is done either A, by the owner themselves because they don't want anyone else to see it, B, by uh, their sister-in-law or their brother-in-law or somebody that said they were an accountant that comes in that misses half the days but never really had any training and sometimes correct and sometimes they're not and then somewhere along the line they quit and you have a transition issue uh, or C by just somebody off the street that really doesn't really care a whole lot and just has a job. 
all of that can be solved if you address your internal accounting issues and your KPIs as a package. You can save tremendous amounts of money outsourcing your bookkeeping. That's why the Fremont Group started up a outsourced accounting staff uh, for small business owners. That way, number one, uh, you're not doing it and not taking all of the time away from running the business to do your accounting. Are you an accountant? Are you a business owner? Think about it. You want to get paid what uh, a bookkeeper makes? Fine. Do your bookkeeping. You want to get paid what a business owner makes? Fine. Be a business owner and have someone else provide that information to you. Secondly, uh, no vacations. There's enough staff so that things can go in between and so on and so forth. And so the work is always completed. And even if someone wants to take off, you don't fall behind. Uh, you don't and uh, tied in with that, you always have a layer of staff. So someone is checking the work that another person does uh, to make sure that it's done properly. Um, it's also, uh, there's no sick days. There's no, and none of the benefits have to be paid. Um, the bottom line is you can save thousands of dollars and get it. Then when it's done in coordination with a success partner, uh, creating the uh, KPIs that you need, we can actually produce additional information. You should get from us every week a weekly cash flow. Here's where your cash flow stands at the end of this week. Here's where it stands at next week for the next six weeks out. And are you okay? Do any modifications need to be made? Here are the bills you're planning on paying for the next few uh, weeks and so on. Uh, can you pay them? What do we have to rearrange? What has to be done? All of that just comes in a report that you can just look at, can rearrange things, get it done, turn it in, and have it paid. That's a much more effective use of your time if you're really training on being a business owner. So how can the Fremont Group help you? Well, first of all, with our success partners. Our success partners are experienced professionals uh, who have been there and done that. Uh, they meet with you and uh, uh, deal with all of the rocks in the road for, that are in the way of you getting to where you want to go. Not just the accounting we're talking about here, but operationally and so on. Uh, whatever it takes for you to obtain your goals, that's what they're going to work on and produce. If for some reason you're outside of an area of expertise of one success partner, fine, we'll, we'll supplement it with another success partner. But our people have been there and they've done that and uh, make a big difference and can structure your business in a way uh, that you are getting the information that you need to have. People are held accountable, they have appropriate incentives, and your business is actually making money uh, based upon uh, your budget, which is your financial plan designed to produce a minimum mandatory percentage of profit, uh, a, pre a desirable, uh, desired predetermined result. Uh, we can provide accounting for you. All of your accounting services can be done. We uh, do not internally give you any tax or legal advice. However, we can do tax referrals, legal referrals, different so on, uh, types of referrals uh, for the types of professionals that you need and give you a ballpark for what those things really should cost you. So how do you reach us? Well, the simplest way is pick up the phone and call 303-338-9300. Uh, leave a message or uh, we'll get someone directly and uh, we can talk about your business. It's confidential. You can go to our website and check us out at, uh, at uh, tfginfo.org or send us an email at admin at tfginfo.org. Uh, the uh, most effective way, again, I would start in the website and on the website, go to the bottom and schedule yourself an exploratory consultation. It's free. You schedule a time uh, and we will go through uh, uh, some of our proprietary diagnostic materials uh, that will compare your business against others, uh, create uh, uh, and show you where your strengths and weaknesses are, and also determine whether or not some things are worth fixing it or where you should start and so on and so forth. Uh, that again is, is free. Uh, we hope you'll take advantage of that service. Also visit our blog uh, at uh, patreon.com. Uh, the, uh, there we have all sorts of articles, other webinars um, and uh, materials there uh, that will help you run your business. Again, my name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the executive director of the Fremont Group, and we hope to hear from you. We hope this has been worthwhile.